I'm going to be picking up something that I, I dropped by mistake last year. Or actually, I I did a live on this God Man, uh, this particular book. And I started to read the book, but then I didn't finish it. Now, I did finish reading it offline. I have a paper copy of it. Uh, I want to talk about this book for a minute. It's an old book. And... I have been studying at the PhD level meditation theories of uh, different ways that humanity can pray and tap in. So it's sort of like a mystical type of study about, you know, different theories. So this book is a, an actual theory, and the book is called God man the word made flesh and I'm sort of doing like a podcast now I downloaded the actual book and I uh, I want to continue this is going to be part two of the book and I think some of the ideas I get in some of the podcast style videos that I create that also have graphics put up with them and uh, different techniques if you want to look at images, pictures while you're listening. So YouTube does have a podcast feature now. They just informed me of I didn't know about it. And I'm going to look into that. But for now, I'm going to put the audiobook into this list. And if you subscribe and ring the bell, you get updates of the videos. So this particular video... Um, had a, a lot of response which I was surprised about but one of the things that happened was I was like I don't know why I, I abandoned it like like I said I if you go to the front of my channel let's go to the front real quick I'm, I'm, I'm doing a quick brief um, a quick brief uh, view of the channel watch this so you have this here at the front, right? When you navigate the channel, it tells you, you know, I don't have that many people. I've had a little bit of trouble with the algorithm and notices like copyright, things like that. So uh, I actually had videos removed. So I made, it, it lets you put some of the playlists in the front. So... A lot of people had an interest in this Last President book and also the books on um, on the Baron Trump series. So I actually put them in the front of the video so that you could see, you know, playlists. Uh, I don't know, I guess they changed the format a little here, but I, I made playlists. So this is spiritual consciousness, yoga, TikTok. I started the TikTok and I put, there's a community page on here. I put in here, um, you know, do you want me to continue with this book? And I only got like two responses. And I'm like, okay, so there's not that many people watching it or listening to it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave, uh, I'm going to leave that down, and I'm, I, I occasionally look at these things. Okay, so I'm just going to get back to the book and then read it. I just need to figure out where I left off with the other one. So with the other book, actually I have the, the hard copy in my hand. So this book is written by an MD back in the 1900s, you know, in 1920, you know, right when women got the vote in in the United States, and he donated, he he started this, I guess, religion or philosophy and belief, and he he married his ideas and his understanding of chemistry from back then, which is over a hundred years ago, and he combined it with some of these mystical or esoteric arts. And religions 
And he came up with a theory which mirrors a lot of other theories. And he, he goes through the pages and he describes how you can become empowered individually through this type of, of meditation practice. Now, I will tell you, there's other people that go through these phenomena in different ways and have reported different things. And I don't know the veracity of it because I, I would need to do more research. But when you're doing research, you can have a hypothesis. So this is a, a hypothesis that's not completely tested. It's just qualitative theoretical work. So you can either believe it or not, you can try it, but let's see what he thinks and remember that humanity continues to add to their layers of knowledge and sometimes uh, we, we make mistakes in our theories and then we have to go revise. So with all that said, uh, you could do your own uh, hermeneutical analysis, which is just, you know, go back to the source and learn about it. Now, this is combining a little bit of astrology with the scriptures, the uh, monotheistic, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and that sort of thing. So I need to actually, I'm, I'm doing this live, and I'm sorry guys, I've got a lot of things going on. I need to find, um, I need to find this video again. Um, so here's the search bar. Now this won't work on a lot of different devices. When you, when you look at the website and you look at your apps, they'll have different features. Like I am right now on an old laptop and actually they just notified me that they don't do the Mac OS I need to update if I need anyway so God man the word made flesh okay so I want you to just take this okay, here's the last video that I'm gonna be adding up so this is gonna be an addition and then going forward I'm just going to mark the page and then read the next page. I could do this over, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background information and context on some of the theoretical frameworks before I went ahead and talked about it because it's kind of like uh, I wanted to give you some of the latest information when I did this and I was looking into it. And it was two years ago I looked into it, so I've, I've kind of marinated on the idea and I don't know. Uh, it requires self-discipline. It's similar to transcendental meditation, but they they tie it in with lunar cycles and the tides and things like that. Like they're saying that your body temple, um, when the new moon goes in your sign, and they talk about the different the chemistry of your life. And actually, I did. I've got a playlist in here called the Tree of Life, and it's similar. It's very similar. And I read the whole thing. I know I did. And um, it's in here. Okay. This is, I think, why isn't this? All right. How about if we do this? Um, I'm going to try to make this smaller. See if I can see. I don't, here it is. Okay, so this is the Tree of Life. It was written three years earlier. It's by the same author. And so this book is kind of an extension. The the God made word flesh is an extension of the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life is is pretty short. Uh, it's not that long. And uh, so okay, let's let's go back to the other one and figure out where I uh, left off left off. <clears throat> God, man. So I'm going to try to finish this list because I really should have done that. So he also does, uh, he has this book, The Antichrist. 
Uh, yeah, so I've read a couple of these books and then made a playlist, but I stopped at this one. I don't know what was going on in 2022. I think I was going through a lot. Uh, I th I, I'm not I'm not really positive. It says orientation in 11 pages. Let, let me see where the bookmark is in the actual book, because I think I was checking this ahead of time, and I reread it. Page 11. Oh, you know what? I think I read up to page 13, The Kingdom at Hand. Let's... Okay, so, much for joining me okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this toward the end. Just see... So I did a huge introduction of background if you want to look at it. So I'm adding to it. Now, I went on uh, archive.org here and there is actually a link below this video if you go and you look in the drop down box and it will let you um, let me see uh, it will let you go in there and go to the link it you can go on archive.org and you can you can see if you can get the book off of there so archive.org is a nonprofit library and it does lend out books for a limited time that are under copyright, but the ones that are free to use that are no longer in copyright are available there. Now, a lot of times Amazon will take the books and reprint them so you can have a hard copy and make a brand new print of the same old book. Uh, it was, is which is what I did. I bought it on Amazon because I find it easier to hold the book in my hand. And the book is not that long. I'm actually holding it right now. And um, so let's go see where we left off and let's get down to business. In here it's going to go over the, the different uh, table of contents. It's going to talk about, you know, this, that, and the other thing. So I, did, I didn't really read that far in. I did I did a big expose or a background, but that was two years ago, and I've learned a lot since then, and I might have even changed my perspective a little bit. You know, that's what happens with faith and different theories is you change your perspective. I've not been disciplined in um, doing what they say to do here, but I still try to make it a point to uh, practice some of these habits of uh, a regular routine and so on. So this is page 11, only the spiritually blind look for the coming of the truth of life. So it talks in here about this doctor of the time. Um, I don't even know if they had licensing back then. I don't, you know, a hundred, more than a hundred years ago. But, okay, so this is page, okay, so actually, let's, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll read, how far does this go? Um, okay, we're right here. This is page 13. Uh, if you don't mind, I would prefer, actually, though, I did down, I went and got the PDF. I might just read directly from the book it's easier to read but you know there's a saint named Saint Teresa of Avila and she had this book she'd carry around with her and she was a mystic and it was something about the alphabet and in it's similar to this theory that Dr. Carey's talking about in here which I'm about to read to you but some of this I noticed was a little bit repetitive okay so let's go to page we're going to go over to page 14 and then we're going to start to continue so this is okay let's see if I read any of this much for joining me please consider subscribing and liking the videos commenting Okay, so that's it. You know, I don't understand why I'm trying to get this to scroll up, and for some reason it's not wanting to scroll up. 
All right, here we go. Okay, here. So right here with the more, you click on that. It has some timestamps in it. It tells you uh, where I'm doing all the background information. You can jump right to the table of contents, or you can go right in and hear the preface. Uh, and by the way, the English and the writing in here is is uh, it's not what they would do nowadays. So 32, page 10, kingdom at hand, 34, 33. And then I also put in here references to other YouTube channels because this guy, Dr. Zepataro, uh, I think he's got a PhD and an MD from Harvard. He studied, he literally studied in the lab the spinal fluid and uh, looking at the chemistry of it and things like that. And he also studied uh, the meditation. And so uh, he's got more up-to-date scientific data on, uh, the, you know, a more advanced knowledge of this than the doctor that wrote this book, okay? So there you go. There's timestamps if you want to jump ahead. I'm starting a new video. I'm going to pick this up where I left off. And um, I was looking for, I thought the link was in here. For some reason, it's not letting me like scroll unless I go to the sidebar over here. Like it's stopping my mouse. Aha, here's, here's archive.org. Here it is. Okay, let's see if it goes to archive, if the link is still working. I'm testing the link, and it's not taking me. Is it? Okay, it is. Okay, so we're loading, we're loading, we're loading. Okay, so, and look at that. We're on the exact page that it left off on. So maybe I'll just go ahead and read from here, but maybe I could uh, go to the page that I left off on and then bookmark it below if you want to actually look at it. You can buy the book on Amazon. I don't know where else it's in print, but it takes a little while. I think they have some kind of printer there that they do their own printing. So let's get started. Now, I need to make this larger. I don't know about you, but that font is awful small from this perspective. So let's enlarge this. There's a button on the right here for that. You don't even need to use your keyboard. And um, well, actually, I gotta scooch to see these buttons here. If you're navigating archive.org, so I'll actually let me show you the uh, Internet Archive if you want to look at that real quick. So you, if you want to do that, now I think they have a feature on here where you can listen to it. I'm not sure. Read the book out loud. So you know, I think that I think the reason I sort of abandoned reading these books out loud is. You, you can, uh, there's other ways to do that, so. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now, page 14, we're on books rejected by the Council of Nicaea and other ancient books, books of the Quran, Persia, Hebrew, meaning Passover, Esther, Solomon, Egyptian Book of the Dead, Adam, Eve, Enoch, Seth, Seventh Book of Moses, St. Thomas the Doubter, Nicodemus, Patahop, the oldest book known, the Kabbalah. Again, the researchers of such theological... I'm going to make it a little bigger so I don't have to strain here. Theological scholars and James Legg, LLD, first professor of Chinese at Oxford University, Professor William Jennings, Ph.D., and Honorable Clement Allen of Royal... Royal, Royal Asiatic Society, besides several hundred who might be named, embracing the leaders of thought along lines of original sources, agree that hundreds, if not thousands, of ancient manuscripts, tablets, and carvings indubitably prove that all races of all people that have ever inhabited the earth have striven as best they could to leave records of the chemistry and physiology of their own bodies. Science, Egyptology, Indo-Iranian, Chinese, Japanese, Persian, Sanskrit, all 
all forever strove to solve the riddle of the human body. 700 years BC, we have Shu King, China's oldest book, the Shu King. 600 BC, the Yi King, 1143 BC. Then came Confucius, 551 to 478 BC. The writings, statements, philosophy, and symbols of these witnesses of the truth of being corroborates our 66 witnesses in every detail. Now, this is very interesting because there are some biblical scholars that say there's 66 books in the Bible. And this six number is... Um, if you, if you look at the symbols of the numbers, they have some people can assign meaning and significance to the numbers that uh, they, they ascribe as having sort of a, a, um, a essence that is going to uh, be maybe a tipping, tipping point or a closure to a concept. So uh, you look at the Star of David, you look at uh, the fact that it's got uh, two equilateral triangles on it, you know, th that sort of thing. So, okay, I, I've got to stop interjecting my thoughts here. Uh, so 66 witnesses in every detail. The writers of this book have in their possession a library of the ancient scriptures referred to above and know wherefore they speak, but as printing and bookmaking is well nigh prohibited by cost, we feel that we are now justified in lengthy questions. Again, nothing really new can be added after the nay plus ultra statement. There is no other way under heaven whereby ye may be saved except Jesus Christed and crucified. However, the information of our readers will give the table of contents of volume 14 of the sacred books and early literature of the East entitled the Great Rejected Books. And so here's the list. The Old Testament Apocrypha, the Books of Adam and Eve, the Lives of Adam and Eve, the Apocalypse of Moses, the Slavonic Book of Eve, the writings attributed to Enoch, the Great Prophetic Book of Enoch, the Lost Book of Noah, the, 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 uh, the Vision of Heaven, the story, you know, this, this is really, let's skip this one, okay? There's a whole list of books here. New Testament Apocrypha. So there's Old Testament books and New Testament books that had sections thrown out. Uh, his Vision of Heaven, the story of Akar, the Old Armenian Version, the Newfound Ancient Book, um, you know, the Gospels of, you know. So if you want to pause it and look at it, you can, but there's, there's a long list here, and I'm just going to jump over to the next one. Names, okay. So here is uh, an explanation of the names. Names will be explained without alphabetical order. The object being to show that the 66 books of the whole book, holy book, were 66 statements by 66 different writers about the same identical subjects. The human body, its chemical operation, and the planetary positions impinging to create and bring into physical manifestation the visible universe. Adam red earth or flowing of spirit or energy damned up. So what they're saying is if you look in the scriptures and if you interpret the Hebrew and everything there is actually a, a word root or meaning in the names. The names have a meaning behind them. So they're reading more into the scripture than you can see uh, prima facie. It, on its face, it doesn't look the same because there's something that you can read between the lines is what they're trying to say. 
So atom, red earth, flow of spirit or energy, damned up. So that's Eve, mother of all things, ether or pure spirit, mother of God, water fluid, essay, like essence. Cain, what is gotten, acquisition, a spear, a smith, a worker, Abel, transitoriness, breath, vapor, moisture, absorbed, killed by Cain, Seth, seed, seedling or germ, man, see Adam, woman, woo, womb, b, on, or womb, in man, mankind, the regenerative womb or manger in the solar plexus, see Bethlehem, house of bread. So actually this is kind of like alluding to the different energy centers in your body, like the chakras. Okay? Nod, flight, cane absorbed, killed, able, moisture, and vegetation spraying up, shoot, movement, wife, whoops, marriage of earth and water. Joshua, Jehovah in salvation, son of none, fish. Moses, drawn from the water, fish. Abram, high father, father of elevation. Abraham, father of multitude. Aaron, enlightened Buddha, third eye. Hor, and that's spelled H-O-R, mountain. Mountain of Aaron. Now Aaron again is the third eye to repeat or enlightenment. Situated on the east side of the great valley of Aruba, the highest and most conspicuous of the whole range of the sandstone mountains of Edom, having close beneath it on its east side the mysterious city of Petra. Okay, let's go back over here. Petra, rock, rock city, south of Jericho. Edom, Edom red, Edom or Odama, pituitary body. So they're speaking of locations in the brain. Okay, that's why I, I did the background in the first introductory. Because to follow this and having a little bit of knowledge of anatomy that's handed down uh, this medical doctor and his theory uh, is based on other theories. He didn't make this up himself, but he's just packaging it up in a different way. So Jacob is the circle, the heel catcher, the liar in wait, um, applied to the 12 zodiacal signs in astrology to the solar plexus and physiology. So it's this idea of as above, so below, the tree at the top, the roots below the ground. Um, it's, it's about being centered and grounded spiritually and physically. And it's using these figures of speech or these uh, sort of codes, if you will, that are handed down generation to generation through the, uh, the rabbis and whatnot. So, Lee, the first wife of Jacob, presented in astrology by several of the zodiacal signs, namely Reuben, Libra, Simon, Scorpio, Levi, Sagittarius, Judah, Capricorn, Ishkar, Gemini, Zebulun, Cancer, and Dinah, Leo. The name means in Hebrew, wearied, weak, slow, action, inferior, sea cut. Okay, Rachel, second wife of Jacob, a U, as in an animal, an U, E W E, mother of Joseph and Benjamin, represented in astrology by Virgo for Joseph Benjamin, having a deeply esoteric significance. It represents the product, Benjamin. Son of the right hand, son of my old age, called first by his mother, son of my sorrow. He 
was the only child to be born in Palestine, the Holy Land. In Smith's Bible Dictionary, we find this, the Ark was in Benjamin. To esoteric students, this statement is significant. Plainly speaking, Benjamin is the same as Jesus and refers to the seed or the or son that redeems. Palestine, land of sojourners, country of Israel, or holy land. Ararat, holy land. Abba, father, God. Absalom, father of peace. Ada, Adahai, Adai, ornament whom God has adorned, refers to the pituitary body. So that's a location in the brain. Adonai, Lord. Zohleth, the stone, serpent, the rolling stone, the serpent stone, the stone of the conduit. Now again, I don't know if you've ever heard of tonsil stones or different stones uh, in your anatomy or your body, but they're speaking about a location in the brain when they talk about the stone. Your body has minerals in it, salts in it, uh, it's chemical, and they're referring to sort of this alchemical, uh, this, this reaction, okay? So this is just a theory now. It's a hypo hypothetical. Uh, keep keep this in perspective when you're when you're listening to it. It could be there could be something to this because people have said they've had prayers and miracles. But let's just keep going, right? Okay. So we just went through Zohel of the stone, and now Gilga, a circle or rolling way the place where the 12 stones were set up, the place of the Passover, a hot depressed district, says Smith's Bible Dictionary, refers in anatomy to the 12th dorsal vertebrae, or is it vertebra, vertebrae, at which place the semi-lunar ganglion connects. So what is the semi-lunar ganglion just to discuss lay people understandings they're talking about the vagus nerve they're talking about the nerves that run down for your autonomic uh, sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system you have this long it's like a tree uh that some of this stuff is 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 just automatic you know it's in your you've got a center in your brain that's uh they call it the reptilian brain or the primitive brain that keeps you sort of alive. Uh, it just happens automatically. So anyway, they're talking about that. And let's go to the next page. Now, let's see what we have here. Jordan. Okay, again, we're reading the God, man, the word made flesh by uh, the late George W. Carey and Ennis Adora Perry. Uh, from a 1920 print. Jordan, the descender, the flowing river, a river that has never been navigable, flowing into this a sea that has never known a port. Isn't that interesting? And, you know, if you look at a map of the land, it's, it's a place, too. It's a place on Earth. Okay, so... About 200 miles long, rising from the roots of anti-Lebanon to the head of the Dead Sea, the River of God, see Smith's Bible Dictionary, in anatomy of the spinal cord, the great nerve, which is supplied with fluid from the claustrum in the cerebrum. Now remember this Mora Zipatera, they've done more research scientists today. They think they have it down to a science here, but... Let's just keep going, okay? The Jordan was crossed over by Joshua Fish, the son of Nun Fish, Smith's Bible Dictionary. As Joshua and Jesus mean the same, we see by this that this is 
the place of the baptism of Jesus. See further reference to this. Only two fords are mentioned in the Bible. These in anatomy are the end of the spinal cord at the twelfth dorsal vertebra and at the base of the skull. Smith also says that the true source of the Jordan is underground in phila, meaning vile or bowl, and the right hand side. It is from this cave that the Jordan commences its course above ground. Compare this description with the anatomy of the head and its meaning becomes clear. Smith tells us that the upper part of the slope is alive with bursting fountains and gushing streams that find their way into the Jordan. These in anatomy refer to the glands in the brain that connect with the spinal cord. Read in Smith's Bible Dictionary the wonderful description of this river. Genesareth, Gardens of the Prince, a crescent-shaped, moon-shaped plain on the western shore of Lake Genesareth, which is also the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is the semilunar ganglion through which the seed or, or Jesus passes through to reach the spinal cord. The Jordan enters the north and passes out the south. It abounds in fish. Daughter Bath, anything regarded as feminine. Galilee, a circle or circuit. Nazareth, shoot sprout twig. Capernaum, Village of Naham, Consolation, Cana, Place of Reeds, Lungs, Jericho, Place of Fragrance, Cerebellum. Now, okay, so we're at the end of this chapter, which uh, it doesn't have a number on it, but the page number is 18, and the next chapter is The Journey of Joseph and Mary. So, should I continue? I don't know. How long are we going? I'm not even sure. My, my voice is... Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll read a little bit more. And then I'm going to start some new playlists and try not to add too much commentary. So, The Journey of Joseph and Mary, the marvelous story of the journey of Joseph and Mary to Jerusalem to pay their taxes, physiologically explain. On either side of the thalamus, in the head, is a gland known in physiology as the pineal, on the posterior, and the pituitary on the anterior side of the th thalamus. Now, anybody that's taken biology, you know, the anterior and the posterior is the back end, the anterior is the front end. So, uh, it's kind of orienting you in time-space dimension, where you're looking. Sometimes in the military, they use, like, at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. You know, so it's just a way of showing you a scientific cue as to the location in the skull, in the brain. And this the soft tissue, obviously. The pineal is cone-shaped and secretes a yellow or golden fluid. The pituitary body, opposite it, is ellipsoid in shape and contains a whitish secretion like milk. The fluids that are found in both of these bodies come from the same source, namely the colostrum, which means barrier or cloister, and is referred to as cloister for the very good reason that this precious and holy thing is secreted and secluded there. St. Claus, or Santa Claus, is another term for this precious fluid, 
which is indeed a holy gift in the body of each and every one of us. The precious fluid which flows down from the colostrum separates part going into the pineal gland and part to the pituitary body. And these being special laboratories of the head differentiate the fluid from the colostrum and it takes on the colors above mentioned and in the pineal gland becomes yellow and has electrical properties and the pituitary body having a milk like fluid has magnetic properties. These two glands are male and female the Joseph and Mary of the physical body and the parents of the spiritual son born in the solar plexus of each human being commencing about the age of 12 and that's your spiritual maturity and development right you start developing the yellow and white material which is the milk and honey referred to in the Bible the children of Israel having been given the promise of a return to this land flowing with milk and honey or at the last reaches of the solar plexus via the semilunar ganglia see the chart now, I don't know if they have the chart in here. The Bethlehem. So, I I don't know if they have the color plates in here, but the book that I got, the printout, does not have the color plates. And I actually have this copy as well. Um, let's see if we have uh, plates. I think they called it plates back then. Now they call it graphics. Um... So a lot of times these older books would have illustrations in them and then they'd be archived or whatever and the, the illustrations were taken out. Maybe they were framed and put up because the picture's wor worth like a thousand words. That's another reason I sort of grabbed some graphics from the internet and did a little background of what the theory is, uh, the hypothesis that is... Uh, a synthesis of other existing information and theories by others okay so let's see the physical body in Hebrew Bethlehem means house Beth of bread uh, Lehem I am the bread of life said the allegorical Jesus so right now a lot of people might have a contention or be very upset because they are firm believers and they might object to this. Uh, they, they, they believe that there really is a, a Jesus, it's not just allegorical. And I do believe there, there is a Jesus and it's not just allegorical. So let's keep going. In the solar plexus is a thimble-shaped depression, a cave, or manger, and in this is deposited the psychophysical seed, or holy child, born of this immaculate conception. So really I think what they're trying to describe is a mystical experience that you can obtain uh, that is discussed in other literature and there's talking about the physiological but I do believe Jesus did exist and he taught this because it was a guarded secret that a lot of these rabbis had. They were telling you to tithe 10% of your income going to pray for you, you're going to get redemption, forgiveness, all this, and when it's sort of t taking the power away from you and it's giving it to an authority, but you have your own sovereignty and your own authority is kind of what this is teaching. And it's saying it's sort of alchemical, so let's keep going. In the solar plexus is the thimble-shaped depression, a cave or manger, and in this is deposited the psychophysical seed or holy child born of this immaculate conception. The psychophysical seed is also called fish as it has the odor of fish and is formed in the midst 
of the waters, the pure water. Jesus is a fish in the midst of the waters, St. Augustine. Before birth, the human fetus floats like a fish in the fluids by which it is surrounded. And it is with the child formed on the generative plane, so it is with the spiritual child born in the solar plexus, the Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary, by furnishing the material for the spiritual child, which was to redeem the child or body formed in generation, paid the symbolic redemption money. Holy Ghost, Greek for breath, the breath descending the pneumogastric nerve in the solar center enters the manger where Joseph and Mary are. And where is Jesus the seed, literally conceived by the Holy Ghost? So that's a lot to marinate in if this is something new to you. If it's not new to you, it's a lot to take in. Uh, this theory, it's very complex, and it's taking uh, real world, uh, you know, if you look at a holographic universe or if you look at this concept of as above, so below, of having a code, a code, uh, a world within a world, these um, reflections sort of like glittering. Uh, Micah, I don't know if you study ge geology, but there's certain things that glitter uh, under light. And um, I'm going to I'm going to close up. I could add commentary on this, but I think I'm going to close it up for now. I, normally, I have a series I do where I ring a bell, but this is not that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this link below the video, upload the video. And then if you want to read ahead or if you want to review anything, you can. I, I'm going to look into doing podcasts with YouTube. And I've got a really tight schedule, so I'm going to come back and try to finish this book up for you. It's only 180 pages. And I'm making it take a little bit longer because I think this material is kind of dense. And um, I will put it up, but let's just take a sneak peek at what we can look forward to in the future. So they talk about man and that God had made an upright, but um, they saw it many uh, inventions. So they use Hebrew words in here and Greek words and they describe the Greek and the Hebrew wor words, the meaning of them. So we're looking at the, the meaning of the letters, the numbers, the 21st letter, the 22nd letter, what they mean, um, the uh, IT the it, the eternity of protect, uh, per perfect. This is before uh, they knew about computers or in a, in a, um, so obviously this is like over a hundred years ago. It's pretty rudimentary understanding, but it's like sort of a classic theory, and it it might be dis disproven. Um, but yeah, so we'll get back to that. We left off on page 18, and we'll cont or it's actually 20. Okay, again, I will be back to finish this book up for you if you want to listen to it, and I'll look into making a podcast turning some of this into podcasts. YouTube added a nice feature there. Thank you so much, and take care. Bye.